My name is Tom Maroon and I'm the director of the Philadelphia Furniture Bank. It started in uh, December 2014 and it was to answer a problem in the Philadelphia area where people were coming out of homelessness, getting their own places and living on the floor. And a lot of uh, social service agencies in the city were doing various things to meet that need. Their case managers were running all over the city to find deals on furniture. Uh, organizations that worked with formerly homeless people were spending um, ungodly amounts of money on furniture. Philadelphia Furniture Bank is necessary because our city it deals with a lot of poverty and um, people don't have the resources for basic furnishings. Um, when you're worried about bills, more important bills go to the front of your budget and certain other bills go to the back. So when you worry about food and medicine uh, and those are the things that keep you alive and you're in your, your shelter, so very often people can live on the floor for years before they uh, can muster up enough resources to buy basic furniture things like beds, sofas, dressers, and table to eat on. My name is Howard Pinder. I'm the uh, Supported Employment and Volunteer Coordinator at the Philadelphia Furniture Bank. People who are formerly homeless, or they've now got housing and they're um, starting to reclaim their lives, they come to the Furniture Bank uh, to work and we give them jobs. These are people who haven't worked sometimes in like 15 years. And they come here, they work. We do simple job training skills, you know, showing up on time. Just the things that you kind of take for granted that you really need to get back into working. So we're able to, we have a one year program where they come and work for a year and we do simple training. And then we help to also get them to think about what they might want to do as far as work goes in the future. I started to become a volunteer at the Philadelphia Furniture Bank to give back to my community. It's a small step of community service. You know, something small that I can do to give back to pretty much the community that helped me become who I am now. On our first year that we were open, we helped over a thousand individuals with furniture, uh, 388 households, and over half of those households were single mothers uh, with kids who were on really low income. Uh, so I think we just need to help you know, keep telling that story uh, of who we're helping. We only take referrals from member agencies. So th there's social service agencies that pay to be members of the furniture bank. And then they make referrals for folks to come and choose furniture. And so the, the case manager and the participant come together to, to uh, pick furniture, go look through the showroom, and to talk, think through what kinds of furnishings their apartment needs and what's appropriate. and. Uh, and, and basically shop. We treat furniture, I'm a certified bed bug inspector, and uh, we have a hot box where we heat the furniture up to between 140 and 160 um, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, bed bugs die at 122 degrees. We also spray the furniture, and it's just a basic disinfectant that's an industry standard product that we use. The Philadelphia Furniture Bank is in need of three basic things, furniture, funding and volunteers. Furniture is obvious. We need funding because we, our biggest expense, more than salaries and rent, are, is bedding. We buy that new because we don't want to give people used beds. Uh, and so we need funding for beds. And if people want to donate, they can go to our website, follow the links for donations, and, uh, and be able to donate. I don't know, it feels like, a, like it's surreal. Like I can't believe it's actually happening that somebody could take the time out to help somebody in need, as you know, somebody like me and my family. And I'm really, really blessed.